So Jamie Burke, CEO, co-founder of Outlive Ventures. Been investing in the blockchain space for about four years. Um, originally, I came from change management and um, digital innovation, working with large multinationals and corporates. And yeah, four years ago, became convinced that blockchain and decentralized technologies represented the next uh, next phase of the web. Yeah, so basically, um, about two years ago, uh, we'd spoken to uh, over 1,500 blockchain startups at the time. Uh, this was kind of prior to uh, a lot of the, the explosion in tokens that happened beginning part of this year. And we started to see a trend happening where um, companies that weren't necessarily from the blockchain space were coming along and thinking about how they could apply distributed ledger technology uh, to their particular use case. Um, and so that was IoT companies, it was AI companies, it's 3D printing companies that had fundamental uh, challenges with infrastructure that would enable them to scale and scale securely. Um, so we started to see that these companies were, were looking to leverage these technologies and uh, that became very interesting for us because we've always felt that the, uh, the ledger layer um, should be close to the point of free. So a lot of these startups at the time that were trying to build proprietary business models, charging rent to use distributed ledger technologies, we thought was unsustainable that ultimately would be erased to zero. So we started to see that the uh, blockchain technology itself was kind of more of a commodity layer um, and it was about what it would enable on top of that. And so some of the most interesting use cases were things like combining distributed ledger technology with things like AI, um, which are kind of almost perfect bedfellows if you think about it. What does AI need? It leaves lots of standardized data sets. So um, we wrote a white paper called Convergence, which was exploring this trend. Um, you know, how, how could uh, DLT uh, tokens, smart contracts be leveraged by other deep technologies? Um, and so that kind of became the thesis of Outlier um, and is where we kind of focus our investment. So IOTA is a good example of that. Uh, IOTA looked at um, blockchain technologies and thought, well, um, how could this be customized or um, slightly refined to enable uh, a new infrastructure for the scaling of IoT and industrial IoT in a way that Ethereum wasn't able to kind of secure machine to machine micropayments and stuff like that. So uh, IOTA is a really good illustrative example of convergence, um, but we're also investing uh, in things like Botanic. Botanic is looking at lever uh, leveraging um, distributed ledgers and tokens um, for the bot market. Um, so, you know, how can you have um, contributors that build various component parts for bots? Um, which is increasingly becoming the way that we will interface with the internet and the web. Um, and how can you kind of create a bot economy that's going to be uh, existing on a ledger where you can have attribution of um, uh, contribution to the building of the various uh, aspects of the bot, uh, training the bot with AI, uh, and how can you incentivize that system? So, um, uh, so that's kind of the convergence thesis, and that's where we've been focusing you know, for the last two years. So. I think it's an interesting inflection point for the crypto community. So today, the crypto community has primarily been driven by uh, ultra libertarians who want to kind of get rid of the state. Um, in their ideal world, um, you know, they'd build a seastead somewhere and they can kind of do whatever they want and effectively avoid tax. Um, and they're going to leave a lot of people behind. Um, I'm also seeing an interesting other other communities like the platform co-op movement for example which are much more socially orientated um, and are looking at kind of new models which they refer to as post-capitalist so uh, post-capitalist models which is again largely around this mutualization that I was talking about mutual mutualization of value um, and so I think what's critical now is that we it's okay if you have this libertarian branch exploring new new forms of governance and structure and, and what have you. But I think it's important that we have other kind of socio-economic experiments um, from communities that might be more socially orientated. Um, 
uh, and I think that's what's most exciting about where we're at with cryptocurrencies and tokens is that this, in theory, should lead to a Cambrian explosion of experimentation in socioeconomic um, systems. Um, because in theory, anybody has a, a, a money printing press, right? If you think about um, the, the last major revolution, it was the printing press that led to you know, the Reformation. I think it also led to a hundred year war, uh, religious war as well. So there's pros and cons to both sides. But you know, at that point, it was previously the Catholic Church controlled literature, um, and then all of a sudden, uh, the average Joe can print a book and, and disseminate and distribute it. I think this is as revolutionary now. Anybody anywhere in the world can create their own currency to power their own digital economy, and they can configure it to whatever dimensions they want to serve whatever agenda they want. Um, and so, I'm hopeful. Um, as an optimist that that experimentation is going to see um, lots of different examples um, of how we can live and organize um, and the beautiful thing about it is we'll be able to kind of quantify uh, how they perform and so if you imagine that it's kind of you know monkeys with typewriters right if there's enough monkeys printing their own tokens eventually um, we're gonna we're gonna find a system or, or um, a kind of spectrum of systems that we can kind of opt into um, because the most exciting thing about you know when you think as an investor now um, uh, we're not investing in companies anymore we're investing in um, communities to realize digital economies and the power of um, tokens um, combined with um, distributed ledgers is that we can hard code uh, monetary and fiscal policy into these systems um, so they can perform they can behave in theory rationally. So you think about the greatest challenge for an economist is they assume rationality on a market that's totally irrational because it involves messy people who make messy decisions. Um, but here we can actually hard code rules into the system that incentivize or disincentivize certain behaviors. And so I think that whole holds lots of promise. At the same time, uh, that means that uh, the Chinese government or the Indian government or whatever it may be can also hard code um, principles and models into a digital economy uh, as well. So, for example, if you wanted to pursue a cashless society, um, uh, well, you've now got the greatest tool set in the world to create a cashless society where every transaction is recorded and has to pay tax, which you could say is a good thing. Uh, or you could say, well, all of a sudden that's in incredibly intrusive. Um, so I think um, if we've learned anything from Web 2, when Web 2 happened, we all got very excited because we have social media and peer-to-peer -peer, um, environments where we can bypass mainstream media. Uh, one of the downsides, so that led to the Arab Spring and all this wonderful stuff. The downside is, is that we removed a journalists who were a truth filter. Um, and so now we're in an environment of, of um, false news, fake news. Um, so there's there's pros and cons to te technical technological innovations. Um, I think the same is going to be true to this new this new technology kit that we've been gifted. Um, it's going to serve different agendas. So I think the important thing is is that those of us that might be more socially orientated uh, begin to kind of pioneer some different structures. You know, the whole principle of a ledger is that it's a, 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 a record, right? And um, you, you then trust in the, the legitimacy of that record. Um, so that, that promises accountability and transparency and auditability. Um, the reality is there's large parts of the world, whether it's governments or private corporations, that actually don't really want that. There's been a number of blockchain startups, for example, that were trying to apply ledger technology to supply chains when they realized that actually most, most companies don't, don't want auditability of supply chain for, for a number of reasons. Um, so that's kind of in, in, in a commercial setting. I do think, you know, the, the kind of naivety of the web to date has been, well, we can create these anonymous environments and that's gonna be beneficial to everybody. And in reality, you know, w when people aren't accountable, you know, I, some, some of the stuff you see people trolling online, uh, you just think, you know, uh, what could possibly motivate somebody to use their spare time to want to kind of just do that, that level of hate. So I think the, the next phase of the web, Web3, needs to bring in 
identity and reputation that doesn't necessarily have to reveal you know your date of birth and your home address but the idea is that you can be uh, blacklisted or, or, or whitelisted in certain environments where you can drown out um, uh, trolls or, or bots so if you think about I think there's a certain stat and I can't recall it but the amount of internet traffic that's just driven by bots at the moment and these bots are largely for malicious activities whether it's spamming whether it's troll farms um, so I do think um, one investment that we're working on at the moment is Botanic um, and they're looking at every bot having an identity and even the constituent parts of a bot because uh, you can you can effectively configure a bot by borrowing different aspects from a marketplace but the idea is that a bot has an identity it has a license plate um, uh, each constituent part has a license plate so you can know can I trust this bot um, and then you could in theory in a media environment you can ban bots that have a low uh, low, a low trust score um, so you can start to filter out that way whilst keeping the web open um, we, we need a reputation layer we need an identity layer because I think at the moment the web without that is fundamentally broken I don't think it's helpful to society